that I am welcoming you to come home um, and to rejoice always. Cheers. Um, thank God for coffee and tea and warm, yummy beverages that kickstart our day and that we can share together. Well, today I get to share with you uh, a wonderful guest. And I really think that there's people listening, you need to hear this. There is purpose in your pain. And some of you said there, there, you can't possibly, there can't possibly be purpose to what I'm going through right now. But listen, God doesn't waste anything. He wants to come in today and touch you in areas of shame and regret, depression, darkness. He wants to let you know that he is in your future and that he will take what the enemy has meant for bad and he will turn it to good. So I have a great guest today. You might know her as Real Talk Kim, and she is gonna share on her book, You Gotta Get Up. Come on, in 2024, we need to get up and go, and we need to get up and come home. And so stay tuned. Uh, she's funny, she's relevant, she's real, and I know that this interview is for you. It's also for someone you love. So stay tuned. We're gonna go right now to Real Talk Camp. Well, as I told you today, you are in for a real treat because we have Real Talk Kim. And she has just taken the Christian women's community. I mean, men too, but she has such a message for women. God is using her voice with those that aren't saved, barely saved, backslidden, strong in the Lord. And she is just helping position women for this end time move of God. So she's sassy and she's stylish and she's bold and beautiful and she's confident. Um, but most of all, she's passionate. She's compassionate. She's anointed. And she has taken this mantle that God's given her very seriously. And today we're going to be talking about her book, which I love it. It's called You Gotta Get Up. And uh, that is what God is saying in 2024. It's what he's saying to you. So Real Talk Kim, thank you for being on Come Home today. Oh, Jennifer, I am so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Super thankful. Well, I know you have got so much going on, retreats and coaching and pastoring and books and God, a podcast, and God is just using you in a plethora of areas. And so thank you for taking the time to be with me and the viewers today. And we really want to hear about this, the word that God put on your heart for this book and how it can help them right now. Thank you so much. You know, I wrote You Gotta Get Up in the last uh, two years. I was really focusing on writing this new book. Uh, Harper Collins uh, signed me and I was like, God, what, what should I talk about in this book? And my message all over the world, Jennifer, is you got to get up. Like God is not a genie in a bottle. Like you've been laying in that depression for long enough. That marriage ended. You never thought it was going to end, but it did. And you allowed a season in your life to stop you and you got to get up. And so whenever I felt God really wanted me to talk about, you got to get up. It was like, he just started downloading all of this beautiful text and messages into my spirit of all the times in my life that he literally came in when I thought I was going to die. I literally thought an elephant is sitting on my chest and, I'm, and I, I cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel being raised, even a preacher's kid. So I was raised around church. I was in church more than I was at my house. I would see people shouting and falling in the floor. But when I found myself in devastation at 36 years old, 37, 38 years old, walking through a divorce after 18 year marriage ended, I was so devastated that at rock bottom, is where I found the rock at the bottom, which was Jesus. Not until I was like 38 did I really have an understanding of who God is. So that's why I wrote this book. You got to get up. Yeah. And you're so anointed in helping people get unstuck. I think that is yeah. one of your messages. And one quote yeah. you say I, I appreciate is, you know, if you still have a pulse, God wants to use you. If you're still alive and breathing, come on, you know, get it together. Yes. Help you. Yes. 
Yes. And even the more fight, I always tell people, they're like, man, I, I'm getting fought. I feel like I'm in, under such a depression and anxiety. And I'm like, good, because the enemy knows where you're headed. The enemy cannot stop you. He's under your feet. You're not fighting for victory. You already are victorious because yeah. you still got a pulse, which means God's got a plan. And if you are fighting and in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a divorce, in the middle of a death, in the middle of a cancer diagnosis, whatever it is, that's when you got to fight the hardest because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He knew you were going to be here and he's given you the grace to get through it. And so I always tell people that I, I know that's my message, Jennifer. My message is I know how hard it is. Yeah. I know how hard it is when you're in the middle of devastation. I know how hard it is when you're in the middle of the storm and you can't even see in front of your hands like a, a torpedo, a thunderstorm is coming your way. But if you just keep moving, sometimes you just got to take one step at a time. You Sometimes you're just taking a slow step. But if you keep moving, you eventually run out of the storm because every storm runs out of rain. And I know that's what God's given me the gift of is to help activate and love people back to life and let them know that I promise you where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be or you wouldn't be here. God has you here because it's about to propel you into the best season of your life. Woo. If we weren't on Zoom, I'd run. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh. so you were, um, and, and by the way, thank you for being transparent, for being real, for going there. It is what... Uh, the body needs because there's yeah. too many skeletons and when you hide things and when you have secrets, then shame comes in, regret comes in. And you address that a lot in your book. You address okay. unworthiness, that, that, that fight that you have to <clears throat> strip unworthiness off through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then you, uh, uh, you have this thing where you've got to eliminate excuses. You've got to own your stuff. So let's talk about that. You know, for me, it was because I was so, so mine started, Jennifer, I started out in kindergarten being diagnosed as learning disability. And I thought for sure, and my mom and daddy thought for sure after, for, after kindergarten, and I got out of my fear of leaving my mom and dad, that I would step into, you know, finding my way. I didn't. And so from kindergarten all the way through about 10th grade, I was in special ed, like literally had to leave class, go into this special ed class, uh, felt like I had labels on me. I couldn't remember anything that I retained. The only reason I got out of it in 10th grade was because I'd been going to a Christian school and literally one day I'm in this class and I start filling my face. I'm like, maybe I'm drooling and I don't know it. Maybe, maybe I am who they say I am. And at that year, something's flipped in me. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to get out of this class. Like I'm going to figure out. I literally found myself laying hands on myself as a, as a 10th grader going into 10th grade. And I would tell God, God, awaken me, give me focus. I mean, I was praying like, like elementary prayers, like God, I want to learn. I need, I need, I need focus. I need, and in 10th grade, I, what I weaseled my way, like, like literally, fought my way out of it, but it was still a label that had been placed on me. And so it started, the enemy started fighting me with insecurity. And I was the only one in my family that was like five, nine and big. My daddy was only like five, 10. My mom, Mimi is five foot tall, 99 pounds soaking wet. So I was always called Amazon. So it was like the enemy was fighting with my, with, with who I was. And it wasn't until I walked through that divorce after 18 years. I mean, I was always one of those, Jennifer, that was like, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove that I'm this. I'm going to prove that I'm that. I would start design companies, interior design companies, they would make, the, I'd be six figures in no time. It was like everything I touched, I was just showing you, showing you, but I never had peace. I never had peace. More money came, never had peace. More marriages, I never had peace. They never lasted. And I literally had watched the enemy beat my self-esteem up all the way until I ended up back at my mom and daddy's house with my two sons living in a 10 by 10 bedroom, the size of my old walk-in closet. And I had to come to grips with who I was. And I remember laying in my bed one night saying, God, take this pain away from me. Mm -hmm. And I heard God say, I can't take it away. You got to get up and walk away from it. And Jennifer, that hit me with a ton of bricks because I was always taught you can just lay out on the floor. You can just get a prophetic word from somebody. And that's that's your answer. And I realized at that moment that it's having a God encounter. 
that you got to know who God is for yourself. That means you got to look at yourself in that mirror. And some of you watching this today, listening to this, you got to ask yourself, what is it that I keep allowing in my life and in my mind? whether it was a mistake I made or a bad choice I made, or maybe it was nobody in my family ever accomplished anything. And now I feel like I ain't got the, the wherewithal or the DNA to write a book because I, I was in special ed my whole life, or I had to drop out of school and help my mother take care of my brothers and sisters because my daddy would. Whatever the lie is that the enemy's telling you today, I want you to know that it was a setup where you what you have walked through in your life is free life college. I want you to think about this. You got free life college and you ain't got to pay one student loan back. Yeah. So today you got to stop detesting where you are. You got to stop beating yourself up with shame. You got to stop allowing yourself to stay in situations when God says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Submit your ways to him and he will direct your path. That's what he says. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to bless you and not harm you. And then he says in Romans 3, uh, 8, 28, he says, I am working all things together for your good. So today, if you get nothing else out of this, I want you to understand that God has plans to use every single thing you've gone through, even the mistakes that you've created on your own, trying to look for love in all the wrong yeah. places, but whatever it is, God's got you today. Stand on that note. If you ain't dead, God ain't done. <laughs> That's awesome. That is true. And I, I love your passion and your joy and your conviction. And I, and you have an authority because you've been through this and you've walked through it and yeah. you trusted the Lord. You're on the other side of it. Now you can throw that lifeline back like you're doing today, like you yes. do in your ministry and through your books. You know, I, I think people don't realize books mentor you. So right. and you can, people either can go through their own stuff or they can learn from your choices, my choices and, 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 alleviate a lot of pain. But yeah. you know, one thing you said in your book, um, Kim, it, it, that I love, and you just kind of touched on it um, here, uh, is that um, you aren't what you've been through. Oh, you're not what you've been through. You know, I often uh, think of the story, Jennifer, of uh, uh, Rahab the harlot, right? And how literally God used her because she was a good liar. <laughs> She was a good liar in her seat in her season before she found Jesus, right? And so he said she's got such an anointing. You know, I always turn stories yeah, to how I see them. Yeah. And God said, I'm gonna let these two, these two uh prophets that are coming to spy out the land come stay at your house. And because you've been so good at lying all your life, <laughs> you'll be able to cover for us. And it it talks about how God used Rahab to hide these two, and then she got saved, and then she became the lineage of Jesus. And stories like that, the woman. And that woman with the alabaster box. I mean, she broke the perfume that she paid for by sleeping with men to take care of herself. The woman at the well had been married five times. And then God comes in and tells her the first person he ever tells that I'm the Messiah is this woman that people were talking about. It's a woman caught in the act of adultery. It's Noah that got drunk and danced naked. It's David that he said, I'm a man. After, you're still a man that for God's own heart, even after he had his, his, his lover's husband killed. I'm talking there's stories stories in the Bible where God is saying, I love to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. And so when you can see in your heart that God let it happen and the let it happen was the greatest gift to your life because he knew that it was going to be ammunition. He knew that in 2024, you were going to be watching Jennifer's show on this air, on, on this airing today. And he knew that you were going to have a connection and your, your future and your destiny was going to catapult with your past and an anointing was going to come out of you that was going to literally rip that thousands of people out of hell. If you wouldn't have walked through it, you wouldn't have that empathy. If you would just look at it like that, you know what I'm saying? It happened. It's done. Now yeah. what? Yeah. And, and you deal with that, eliminating the excuses, yes. the things that have gotten you stuck, the things, and that's your subtitle, grab a hold of your life after being knocked down, held back and left out. You got to get up. Yes. Nobody's coming to get you, Jennifer. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what I realized. It was no man that I was going to marry. That was going to fill the void that God could fill. There was no person on this planet that was going to value me or put a, a even put me in, a, in front of a pulpit, in front of thousands of people that was going to, all of a sudden, Real Talk Kim was going to be birthed. It was me and God in a room 
and me learning who Jesus was for real, me understanding the power of knowing he's a good, good father, that even when things don't go my way, even when he sometimes wrecks your spirit to save your soul, that all of it is used because of the big picture that he's bringing together for your future. Yeah. And so you got to just keep getting back up again. That's what I've discovered. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That means just life. Yeah. God can't make your ex-husband act right. God can't make that business person that you put all your 401k in, believe in you're all going to start this incredible business. And he what, didn't have any character and didn't pay y'all's taxes and you got closed down. God can't make these people do right. But what he can do is take the mess that you found yourself in and turn it into a message. And he's an expert at that. He's an <laughs> I love expert. That. And then he gets all the glory for it. Yes. And it's just us holding on when we yes. go through the process. And, you know, I know there's people listening and they're like, wait a minute, you grew up in a preacher's home and you pastor a church and you didn't have that encounter with God till you were 36. But, you know, we all have that defining moment, that tipping point where we have that bam, that collision, that face, face to face encounter. And Kim, it usually happens in our brokenness. Like you said, when we come to the very end of ourself. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if I would have never walked the path that I walked, I would probably be in Dominican Republic right now, <laughs> sip, sipping on a virgin something. That's a good place thinking, to be. Yes. And not, but I wouldn't you. be up. Yeah, I wouldn't be getting up at 8 a.m. every morning for prayer call where right. thousands of people meet me every morning and we have thousands of ones every day of people giving their hearts to Jesus. If I would not have realized the loneliness of sin yeah. and if I would not have allowed myself to realize that all the places that I was seeking for God in human flesh, all I had to do was look to him. And so today, if you're, if you find yourself at that place, you just got to begin to tell yourself it ain't over. Right. It ain't over because God is still with me. And at any moment, even if I find myself face down, just struggling at the rock bottom, the best thing I can do is just flip up and look up because yeah. I'm going up from there. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, and I know I keep going back to the book, but I think, you know, if you're listening, I'm so thankful you do. <laughs> well, listen, if y'all are listening and you are, and you resonate with this, you need to go to realtalkkim.com and, and grab this book. I mean, you can use it for Bible studies. You yeah. can use it for personal uh, reflection because you can, you can journal. There's declarations, there's prayers. Every chapter starts with a testimonial story. It's real and it's practical. It's not something that you can use 20 years from now. You can use this stuff today. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate the way you formatted it. Really awesome. Okay. So on page 14, uh, you, I, I love this. You said, um, Jesus told you that you were to live as though you had no past. Come that on. is powerful. Come on. That's I love that. And he did, you know, because he, he when, when, I remember whenever I was coming out, of my pit. And I thought, man, I'm just too exhausted. I'm too old. I'm too tired. I've made all these, these mistakes. Now I'm going to have to go work at a normal job every day. Cause I got two sons that need their mom. And so I just thought retail was going to be my future. And I remember one day I just started praying. I would prophesy over myself. I mean, I would have to drive Jennifer. I would drive one hour to work one way to Lenox mall to work at Bloomingdale's and Estee Lauder. And I started using that one hour as my Bible school. And I would literally put preaching on. And I put, y'all, I put all this in my book. I'm telling you every single chapter, because I understand how hard it is. The life and death are in the power of your words. I understand how hard it is to find life and death, Jennifer, I, to identify the difference. I know how hard it is to not have anything to pray when you feel like all hell is breaking loose in your life. And after every single chapter in this book, I put a prayer for you to repeat after me and a prophetic declaration for you to speak over your life and your family every single day so that you can start reframing your words. You can stop saying, man, my life stinks. I'm going to be here forever. I'm never going to have anybody love me. I'm never going to get out of this hole. I can't see my way out of all of these debts. And instead you can start prophesying. This is just where my story is beginning. I prophesy that I'll be a bestseller. I prophesy that doors are opening that no man can shut. I teach you how to do that in this book because that's how important it is. The enemy cannot take you out. So he's wearing you out and he's doing it with your whole mouth. 
That's good. And listen, that is a word from heaven. That is what God is speaking to the body, that we have got to align our mouths. And so your book, Declarations, are powerful. Powerful, so Jennifer. He had to decree and declare a thing before anything changed in his life. Yes. And we can't agree with the enemy with our mouth and then and and then use faith at the same time. It's like we're, our sword's not working. Oh, you can't do both. You can't be... Faith and, and and faithless. You cannot be pitiful and powerful. You're right. You cannot be a warrior and a worshiper. You gotta choose. You have to choose. choose the best. Amen. Amen. And you help us do that in your book. Okay, so here's on page 34. Um, this touched me. Um, you uh suffered from being afraid of the unknown. And you know, yeah. sometimes people don't get unstuck because they, they are afraid. You know, they don't realize Jesus is in front of them, whatever it takes. And then I, you said in that quote on page 34 that we've, you had, and this goes with the decreeing and declaring that you had to come out of agreement with the destructive path of the enemy, because uh, the enemy has a script for your life and God has a script. And yes. it's times in your brain. It's like both scripts are running, but you had to come out of agreement, cancel the contract and then come in agreement. So talk yes. about that. That's, that's a big one too. It is huge, Jennifer, because I don't think we realize it. Like when we're walking through a divorce and we're like, I ain't never get married again. Never. We ain't never trusting anybody again. You're basically just made a work contract. Yep. You're right. And so you, 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 in your feelings, are over here prophesying something into your life that you need to go back and say, you know what? I'll take that back. I was being crazy. I didn't want a big old burly man living up on me and protecting me every day. You know, we make contracts like, like I'm never going to get out of this place. I'm never going to get above ground every single month. I pay my mortgage and me and my kids still have to eat romaine noodles and you're making contracts. And so you got to literally, tonight is a great night for you to start. Tonight is a great night for you to get your journal out. I believe in journals because this is how I've written almost all of my books, Jennifer, is going back and looking through my journals and being like, girl, you were a mess. You were, oh, and see, and it's almost like a Facebook time hop, right? Where yeah. God's reminding you because in that journal, you're getting things out of your spirit. And the problem is so often as adults, we just keep stuff piling it down, piling it down because we think we ain't got time to deal with us because we taking care of kids and making sure they're eating and we ain't taking care of us. But tonight's a good night for you to begin to write in your journal and just talk to God. God, this is this is February. This is where I want to see myself in March. 30 days, God, you can do anything in 30 days. So Lord, drop stuff in my spirit that I need to do to begin to change my trajectory and then be quiet. Amen. And when you start feeling things dropping in your spirit, that is God. See, we make God too hard, Jennifer. Whatever you're saying, we think God's going to be like, Kimberly, don't you go that direction. That is not how it works. This is why you have to be careful who you let in your ears. Because some of y'all got so much noise going on around you that you can't hear God. And so the thing you need to do this whole month is just to be like, God, I want X, Y, Z. That X, Y, Z needs to be, God, I want to be all you want me to be. I want to be the best wife. I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best employee. I want to be the best business owner. I want to be creative and innovative. I want to begin to be the first uh, wealth builder in my family. I prophesy I'm going to be a millionaire yeah. in two years or in one year. You start prophesying it every day. And write down in your journal. And every day you start writing the changes you see in yourself. And you'll have a bestseller on your hands when you go back and look. You watch. We'll see what you said is what the whole book is. You got to get up. You got to journal. You got to pray. You got to get quiet. You got to listen to God. You got to read books. Yeah, you got to. Okay, so I want you to just minister now because I don't want this to end. And I know you promised to come back and we'll do some more things together. But why don't you just release, impart, and, and, uh, and position people to get up? Yes, Father, I just thank you right now for Jennifer. God, I pray over Jennifer that as she is carrying this show, God, as it is in homes all over the world, that Father, her yes, her yes for the kingdom is literally shifting families, is shifting individuals right now. So I pray a double portion over Jennifer God in this year, 2024. She will see the windows of heaven opening. She will literally be in an Amos 913 anointing as well as everybody else watching today. I prophesy that Amos 913 anointing right out of that message version that says it won't be long. God's decree said things are about to happen so fast for you 
that your head is about to spin. Blessing upon blessing, you won't be able to keep up. So Father, I prophesy a trajectory shifting. I prophesy marriages coming together, joy in their families, peace in their families. I pray all, all uh, 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 financial difficulties being broken. I prophesy infirmity and bodies are going and dissolving. I prophesy generational curses are breaking over these amazing people today. And I prophesy from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, they feel an excitement and a joy within them that they have not felt in years. That Lord, we understand that we can even be going through hell and come out on fire. And today, Father, we're taking back everything the devil stole. The devil thought he had us, but he did not have us. If he would have known what we were going to become, he would have left us alone. So today, God, we are bouncing back, every single one of us. In the name of Jesus, joy is your portion in this next season. Buckle your seatbelt. Watch what God's going to do through you. Woo-hoo! Yes. Yes. Real talk, Kim. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank there you. Was- fire on that. There was an anointing on that. And I know daddy loves his girls, his, his boys, his children so much. And he's saying, come home. That's what this show is all about. If you're listening and in order to come home back to your uh, rightful inheritance, back to that intimate encounter back there, you got to get up. You got to get up. You can't come home unless you get up. And so Um, Thank you. I love partnering with other powerful warrior kingdom women, brides that are saying, (laughs) come on, we got work to do. We've got to be about our father's business in 2024. And so thank you so much. And listen, if you're listening, um, you you, listen, you can, you might say, I want more. Go to realtalkkim.com. And there's coaching programs. They're reasonable. There's resources. You just pay a monthly amount. She does conferences. She's traveling. She has a podcast. She's got campuses where she pastors. God has graced you to do all these amazing things. And so I pray an anointing on you just to um, be able to shoulder and carry and run with all the responsibilities that Abba has you stewarding uh, right now. But um, this was just an appetizer. I loved it. We're going to have more of Real Talk, Kim. And um, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Jennifer. You're amazing. And uh, so listen, thank you for watching Come Home. Uh, Thank you for supporting this program. Thank you for partnering with us so that we can continue to give a platform and highlight these frontline iconic pioneers that are stomping the ground for the Trinity. And Real Talk, Kim is one of them. Uh, My name is Jen Mallon, and I welcome you and invite you. Come home. Need to catch up on this week's Come Home episodes? Or just want to revisit your favorite conversations? Watch every episode on YouTube, where you can share and comment. Just visit youtube.com slash CTN online.